Camera Raw's interface and controls make it extremely easy to use in comparison to trying to achieve similar results using Adobe's Photoshop. But what if you don't have a camera that shoots in RAW? Can you still take advantage of Camera Raw's non-destructive editing? Well, the answer to that question is yes. Even if your camera only shoots in JPEG or TIFF, you can still open and edit these files in Camera Raw and take advantage of most of the associated benefits. Now, let me walk you through a couple of different ways of opening your JPEG and TIFF files in Camera Raw. Now, as you can see, I have a folder open here and it only contains JPEGs. So let's now go and double click on one of these JPEGs. And as you can see, it's opened up in Adobe Photoshop, which is not what we want. So now let's go and close that. So that's generally what happens. Now, what you can do instead of opening it directly from your folder there, if you would open in Photoshop, you could actually go to uh, open and open up the same folder. You'll see they're all JPEGs there. And I go, I'm going to open this file here. But instead of actually leaving the format set to JPEG, change that and set it to Camera Raw. So we're sort of tricking Photoshop into um, automatically opening up your JPEG file in Camera Raw as opposed to ordinarily opening it up in Photoshop. So we set that to Camera Raw and then we go click Open. And as you can see, it's now opened up in Camera Raw. So that's how you get around actually opening up JPEGs or TIFFs in Camera Raw using Photoshop. So once you start making changes to your JPEG files, you'll notice that it actually starts to write those corrections to your JPEG's metadata. So it's non-destructive. It's not actually physically changing the file unless you want it to. And in that case, you'd actually need to go and save it as a new file or open it as a copy of your original JPEG uh, in order to physically change the original file information. Um, but in this particular example, any correction that I actually make to this file it's only getting stored in the actual um, metadata. So, which is really neat, especially if you ever want to jump back or, or come back directly into Camera Raw itself and make further corrections to your JPEG or TIFF files. So, with that said, uh, I mean, you can do the majority of all the different adjustments that are available to you in Camera Raw to your JPEGs. I mean, within reason, because obviously your JPEG files aren't raw files, so they don't contain as much information as uh, a raw file does. Uh, but you do have available to you all of the actual uh, panel options and all of the tools. So you can primarily make m the majority of adjustments uh, that are available to you to your JPEG and TIFF files. So you're really not limited. And to make simple corrections, you can go through and just you know, work your way through the panel making slight corrections here and there, and it doesn't take you that long until you've actually got a result that you're reasonably happy with. So in comparison to Photoshop, you'd have to set up different layers, use different filters and different adjustments, you know, like levels, curves, color balance, selective color, a whole range of things like that in order to try and reproduce similar color corrections that you can do in Camera Raw within, you know, you know, a couple of seconds to, you know, a minute, a couple of minutes. Um, so there's a big difference in the ease of use using Camera Raw as opposed to actually trying to recreate the same results in Photoshop. So that's one of the main advantages of actually wanting to use Camera Raw to edit your JPEG and TIFF files. The other main advantage is actually to use the batch correction um, feature of Camera Raw, you can open up multiple JPEG files and correct them all at once and apply similar corrections if you wanted to and even synchronize those corrections across uh, a range of photographs, which saves you a lot of time instead of trying to do that in Photoshop. I mean, it's very similar to using Adobe uh, Adobe's Lightroom, for example. So that's what you can do um, using Camera Raw's. Uh, with regards to actually opening up your JPEG and TIFF files. Another way to go about this is if you don't want to actually open up your, uh, open up Photoshop, for example, you can actually use just Adobe Bridge um, because 
Camera Raw plugin itself is actually built into Bridge. You don't actually need to open up Photoshop in order to open up Camera Raw. So the way to actually go about doing that is you instead of just double clicking on, say we'll, we'll try a different file this time, instead of just double clicking when you and it opens up in Photoshop, what you'd actually do instead of that, in order to avoid opening Photoshop at all, you'd actually right click on your image and you'd actually go open in Camera Raw. And this will actually open Camera Raw up, but it opens it up within Adobe Bridge instead of Photoshop. So you're obviously saving a lot more computing power by only opening up Camera Raw and Adobe Bridge in, you know, at one time as opposed to having Adobe Bridge and Photoshop open, which obviously Photoshop uses a lot more processing power. And with the way that digital SLR files are these days, they're actually a lot larger than what most people are used to working with. So by having uh, less applications open on your computer allows your computer to have more processing power designated specifically to editing your photos. So that's another way of actually opening up your JPEG or TIFF photos in uh, Adobe Bridge without having to open up Photoshop.